Okay, so the other day on Instagram and Facebook, I shared a video and some photos of this modification that I did on some of my tools. Uh, basically, I cut the cord and I am now using the Neutrik PowerCon True One Quick Disconnect uh, fitting. What this basically allows me to do is to have one extension cord, one power lead to work with all of my tools. Now, I only have a couple of these fittings left and the next thing I wanna do is uh, put the fitting onto my uh, multi-tool here. But let me back up. Let me back up and I need to state that it doesn't matter, I don't think it matters if you have a male or female end on the tool. What I have here on my uh, extension cord is a female fitting, which means each tool has to have a male fitting, okay? So just keep that in mind when you go to buy them. I'll, down in the description box down below, I'll put the part numbers that I used. I'll put a link to the place that I bought them. I am not affiliated with the website that I bought them at. It's just a place that I found here in the United States that supplied them that was close to me. The tools that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a T8 Torx bit that's going to connect the wire to the fitting itself. You're gonna need a way to cut and strip the wires. I have a utility knife, I have a pair of wire cutters, and I have a pair of wire strippers. I did find that on the first two that I, that I uh, installed the fittings on, my sander and the, and the router, uh, you really need some kind of lubrication, whether you could use some soap, some hand soap. I have some O-ring lubricant. And what that does is you put it on the wire and this yellow piece back here, that's a rubber grommet. And it just helps slide the fitting onto the cable itself. And I found that by not using a lubricant, there is a, inside, there is a small metal clip inside here. And if it's a metal clip is inside there and it's, it's holding the yellow piece onto the, the black plastic, okay? It's holding these two pieces together. Without lubrication on the cable, these two pieces will separate and then there's a certain position that you have to put that metal clip on. It's not hard, but it's just my little heads up to you. Make sure you use some, some lubrication on the cable, okay? Go ahead and walk you through the steps. I'm gonna put this fitting onto my Porter Cable Multi-Tool. And what I've been doing on all these other tools is where the main cable goes into this extra protective piece of plastic, this extra coating, I don't know what it's called. From this point, I measured down, and it's not scientific, it's what I've done, it's been working for me, about three fingers, three inches or 75 millimeters. From this point is where I make my cut. Oh, and some of you guys are gonna probably notice that this do not remove tag on here, this piece of plastic, this is nothing. <laughs> if it says on your, if you have one of these on your tools, it says M tag, Google M tag. All this is is a uh, anti-theft device that some manufacturers put on tools. So you don't need this. This is not going to prevent the tool from working. Okay, so we got our cable cut. First thing I'm going to do is put some lubricant onto the cable itself. You're gonna keep these two fittings together at first. And then you're gonna press, and it's gonna help you just slide the cable through there, okay? Then you could separate the two fittings and now from here is where you want to measure about 20 millimeters and remove 20 millimeters of the protective coating 
of the cable. Now I'm going to use a utility knife and if you're going to do this just make sure that you don't cut down too far. You just want to cut the black, black coating. I'm not trying to cut all the way through. And then you could get it to a point to where you could bend it over and you could see that the the rubber coating is starting to tear. Okay? So get that out of the way. Now the way that the cables are made, it has some extra string in there. And we don't need this extra string, so I'm going to cut this extra string off. Now the instructions tell you that you need to remove off the white and the black wire about six millimeters or a quarter inch of insulation. And then I'm gonna give these a nice twist. Make it a nice solid connection. Now you got this, this white piece we can slide that over the cable, curve part goes into the first fitting that we put on. Okay. Then we're going to take our, the fitting that the cables go into, the cables are going to go into the back here. Now you can see that is, this is a three conductor cable. You have your neutral, your load, your hot, and a ground wire. The tools are double insulated tools, so there's no ground wire coming off. So I'm going to take the spot where the ground wire goes and I'm going to tighten that set screw up. That spot is identified with the universal symbol for a ground. So now that leaves us the L for the load and the N for the neutral. The neutral is going to be your white wire. And you can see here that it is N for neutral. So I'm going to put the white wire in the spot for neutral. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. And tighten up that set screw. And that leaves us our load wire, our hot wire. And this is going to go into the spot with the L, L for load. And get that nice and tight. All right, now this, let me bring it to you here. This white piece connects to this black piece. I don't know the technical names. There's only one way that these pieces are going to fit together. There is a tab and a little slot. And you want to line up the tab and the little slot on the two pieces so that it locks and looks like something like that. Okay. I didn't buy the tool to connect to make this connection. There's a special tool that fits into the grooves on this back end of the fitting. I don't think you need it. Tighten it up, this fitting, to where you can no longer see the yellow O-ring. So now I'm going to slide this piece, the first piece that I put on, I'm going to slide that forward so it goes, the white piece goes into it, okay? Now on these, on this piece here, there are four tabs. One of the tabs is wider than the other three. Inside here, there's four slots for those tabs. One of the slots is wider. So you just have to match up those, the wide slat, uh, tab with the wide slot, and then you're gonna slide it in place. Okay, then it's just a matter of threading the two pieces together. And as you're threading it, you can hopefully hear it's clicking. Should be another click coming up soon. Right there, more clicking, more clicking. And that's it.
So I got it tight and I cannot see the yellow O-ring. And that's good, that's good and tight. This cable that I use for my extension cord, it's a 14 gauge cable. It came off of my big router here. This router uses a 14 gauge cable, but the other tools that I have here have a 18 gauge cable. I want to make sure that I use the thicker gauge cable. That way it can supply the amperage needed for the router when I'm using this router. It's okay to use a thicker gauge cable on the smaller uh, tools. They're not going to draw as many amps as the router will. So I just want to make sure that I used a thicker gauge cable for all of these tools. You know what? What the heck? Just to prove that it works, let me go plug in the vacuum and uh, show you what's, what's going on. So this is the extractor that I'm going to be using this cable with. It's got a auto on feature. So whenever the trigger is pulled on the tool, the extractor is going to come on. So now let's just say, for example, I'm using the jigsaw and I'm cutting something. The tool will come on. You know, it's a, it's a nice vacuum, but it does, it stays on for a long time afterwards. <laughs> but anyways, um, so now to disconnect these, it's really easy. Each one of the fittings has a yellow spring loaded uh, switch or button. Each one of these buttons has an arrow telling you which way to turn it. To disconnect it, you're going to uh, take each one of the spring loaded buttons and press them away from each other and then you're going to turn counterclockwise and then your connection is is undone and to make the connection it's real easy it's only going to go in one way there is a wider tab on the female end and a wide slot on the male end so you can only connect them one way but you're going to put the two together and then you're going to give it a twist clockwise on the female connector, the little yellow switch engages into the male end. Okay. So like I said, I can go now from my jigsaw and if I needed to route an edge, I can route that edge. Uh, now I won't have to go back and forth from from wherever I'm working to the extractor to swap out the tools and I don't have to worry about having a bunch of uh, cable hanging off the edge of each tool I mean it's 2017 I think something like this should be on every freaking tool there should be a, at least it doesn't have to be universal it would be cool if it was universal. So no matter what, if I had Bosch or Milwaukee or Makita, it'd be nice if I could just have one cord for all the tools. Again, I'm not a professional electrician. This, it's two wires. It's easy to do. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it. I'll put a description or in the description, a link, like I said, to the spot that I bought them and the part numbers for the I don't know if it's pronounced Neutric, Neutric, Netric, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll put 
post the description or I'll post in the description the part numbers uh, of that as well. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you around. Take care.